on the spirit of disarming, the spirit of worry, stress, and anxiety, huh, brother? <laughs> Please, God. Lord Jesus. Mm. Wow. Oh, thank God. Wonderful. <laughs> well, you're gonna, well, you're gonna enjoy this one tonight, my friend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, praise God. Well, listen, everybody on the Mega Man, everybody that's listening, uh, Hitman Shannon, that was a fantastic testimony you just shared. Lord have mercy. Oh God, I thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we take stubborn faith and authority over the spirit of stress, worry, and anxiety. Lord God, we ask in Jesus' name that you give us, Father God, a renewed mind, a clear mind. Lord God, Isaiah 26, 2 declares that you will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. And Father, we ask by your precious blood, that you, Lord God, deliver us from anxiety, from stress and worry, from just plain out freaking out when things don't go the way we suspect. Now, Father, there is a lot out here that are listening to the sound of my voice. You are being bombarded on every side. You're being bombarded in the level of home and the level of the workplace and the level of ministry and the level of entrepreneurship and the, and the level of the very dreams and hopes that you have received prophetic word of the Lord and you still find yourself looking like nothing is moving. You know, Shannon, there is a place as I get ready to preach this message here. There is a place, Shannon, where you can get a prophetic word from the Lord and you are waiting for that word to take place and it looks like everything is breaking loose against you. It looks like so many roadblocks, you feel stuck. You feel as if every turn that you make, that things are going bad. Even like you just shared with me about the cryptocurrency, totally disappearing. The wallet totally disappearing, Shannon. And then by the grace of God, boom! it come back. Now, I would have been worried like that too. If I went on my bank account and found all of my accounts gone in the ozone, and Lord have mercy, and then all of a sudden them coming back, I will tell you in between them leaving and getting back, I would have no doubt been in stress, worry, and anxiety. But I want to say to many of you tonight that are listening at me, that spirit wants to grip us so that we lose faith in the promises of God. The scripture that I'm going to launch from, glory be to God, is a familiar passage of scripture. Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 6 through 8. Philippians 4, 6 through 8, and it reads like this. Be careful for nothing. Now listen to what the man of God is saying here. Paul is giving this instruction. He's saying, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer as supplication with thanksgiving, letting your requests be known unto God. Now, here goes the three key elements or the posture that you have to take in order to engage the enemy. It says, number one, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Next, supplication. The word supplication, that is the entreating unto God. That is making you a request to God clearly known. Also, it says prayer, supplication, and then the step of faith, thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto the Lord. So when you're coming to him, hit him up with prayer, supplication, coming before the throne room. You know, Simon, there are sometimes... When Evelyn and I get hit with certain situations that affect our life, whether it's health or an issue, glory be to God, we, we go before the throne room, we go before the courtrooms of heaven, and we plead our case before God according to the word. The Bible declares, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. 
and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Father, I pray as I'm doing this broadcast tonight, let there be an anointing of peace of God that passes all understanding. Now, listen, I said to a person one time, you guys that are listening at me, I said to them one time this. I said, have you ever had a situation that was stressing you out, getting on your last nerve, and all of a sudden the grace of God and the peace of God fall upon you, and the situation doesn't exactly change? Is it about hearing me? The situation doesn't change, but the peace of God that passes all understanding begin to rest upon you, and you begin to walk in a peace that doesn't make sense. All the issues still there. We had a song years ago, Shannon, we used to sing. It's one of them songs that some of these people listening at me out here, y'all have heard this song. Don't wait till the battle's over, shout now. I never will forget that I was raised old line Pentecostal. Holy Ghost church shouting, God anointing believers. And we would worship under that song, and that song would get in our spirit, man, and it would give us a posture of faith. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. In other words, glory be to God. Let your request known unto God with all prayer and supplication and thanksgiving and the peace of God, verse 7, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your minds and heart through Christ Jesus. The heart is the seat of the emotion. The mind is the residue or the place where, where the residue of all kinds of carnal thoughts, doubt, could be, might not happen. It's the mind that gets attacked. The mind is where the imagination is. Matter of fact, the Bible said about this in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring your thoughts into captivity. How do I find bringing my thought into captivity with worry, worry, stress, and anxiety? By keeping my mind in perfect peace because it stayed on him. It says in verse 8, Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true. That's it. Booyah. Did y'all hear that? Whatsoever things, verse 8, whatsoever things are true. Do you know that worry, anxiety, and stress will create a lie that appears real? Did you know that? Did you know that worry, stress, and anxiety will have you creating scenarios? Often, not only just demons, but sometimes our own carnal mind. There's a word I can't stand, Evelyn. You know what that word is? What if? Some people have not walked out and done things that God has prophetically spoke in their life because they're stuck in the valley of what if. My God. Listen here. Whatsoever things be true. Now, what is true? The truth is the word of God. Your word, O oh Lord, is forever settled in heaven. When Jesus was encountering Satan in the wilderness, the enemy said to him, If you be the Son of God, you cast yourself down and angels will raise you up. And Jesus turned around and said to him, It is written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, if Jesus had not engaged him that way, he would have started answering the enemy according to the dictates of of his words. Anxiety, worry, and stress has a voice. It has a voice and it will speak differently than what God said. Also, listen to what it says here. Find out, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now what is true? Right while I'm worrying, God got me. What is true, Evelyn? Evelyn, what is true, honey, is the Lord knew what I would go through before I was formed in my mother's belly. God knows not only the beginning, the middle, and the end. He knows all things. This is why he's saying, be careful for nothing. I got gotcha. you. Listen, suppose you Believe God for a job. You get the job. 
you work on it for a number of years, and then all of a sudden, you it, the job changes. It the job is phased out, or you get fired, or they have to let it go. Does anybody out there actually think that God that gave you the job was shocked that the job had a time period over? God is saying to many of us that job might have had a time period, but I'm the one that owns time. Period. I, somebody didn't hear that. I'm going to say it one more time. My wife is here, so I'm going to act up. I'm going to preach and show off in front of you, baby. Okay. I'm going to say it again. That job, that situation, that thing you're going through might have had a time period to it. But God said, I got time, period. God's got it. Is anybody listening at me? Now, listen to what it says here. This word here, careful. Now, I like to mess with things. The word careful is the Greek word marimnio. And it means to be anxious about something or let it take thought of it. And in this case, Evelyn, the thought takes you. Be, when you become careful and anxious and worry, the thought takes you. But God wants us to take the thought. And he wants us to bring it into captivity. He wants us to look at our situation and say, God's got it. Listen to me real good. Number 23, 19 preaches like this. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. One time Jesus was talking to his disciples, Evelyn, and one of the things that he said to them, he said, look, take no thought for about what you shall eat or what you shall put on, because the, 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 I sufficient is the day. I know all of these things. There's not a bird that falls out of the sky that God doesn't know what's going on. You hear me? To be careful, marimnial, to be anxious about, to be to take thought. This word anxiety, let me define the word anxiety, Evelyn. It is a state of uneasiness or apprehension about the future, uncertainty, and it also causes feelings of fear and apprehension. I'm going to say it again. Anxiety is a state of uneasiness and apprehension about the future, about your outcome. Well, listen to me. We serve the ancient of days. Come on, somebody. I, look, the day right here, what's going to bust devils tonight, Evelyn, is I'm going to preach to you that our God reigns. Our Father is there forevermore. Whatever whatever pitfalls we got to go through, God's already made a way out of. Good God of mercy. This word careful also means it's the idea of distraction. So when you become so careful about something, Evelyn, you get off focus, and then you get distracted. And you get away from the principal thing that God called you to. Actually, anxiety, worry, and stress is the tool the enemy uses to get you in the flesh. He wants to get us in a place. Now, let me tell you what the Bible says. The word of the Lord says that the just shall live by their faith. Are oh, you hearing me? The word of God said, Evelyn, in Hebrew 11 and 1, that it is impossible to please God without faith. So what is the job of worry, anxiety, and stress? It is to get you to stop leaning on your Redeemer. Leaning on, stop leaning on the author and finisher of your faith. And put your hopes and trust in your own self. Actually, when we are unable to work out a situation, that is a true sign that God is the one that has to carry us through. Be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and thanksgiving. Now let me tell you a problem. Listen here. Here goes what the, what the heavens understand. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7, Evelyn, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what, what the first thing that it wants to do to you, the first stage of defeating worry, anxiety, is to surrender humbly before God and combat the things that are in our heart. Listen to me. There is a place in God that he will bring us to, that our desires is so connected to his will 
until the if something doesn't go the way we thought, we will trust that God got everything already thought of. Now that's bad. Though. Did you hear me? That is a place in God, eh, girlfriend. That is a place in God, baby, <coughs> where we have to trust God to such a degree that when we no longer can see, He sees for us. Because God has got it. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Listen to what it says here in 1 Peter 5, 6. It says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due season, casting all your cares upon him. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Do you hear this, baby? F. God is saying here, out of the mouth of the apostle Peter, that we are to cast all of our care. But, but, but Brother Arby, you don't know how them children of mine is acting. Brother Arby, you don't work on that job with that person I work with. You're right. Brother Arby, you, you, you ain't married to who I'm married to. Casting all your cares upon him. For he cared for you. And this word, casting all, it means to throw forth, drop, or throw down. Are oh, you hearing me? Hey, hey, Barry out of there. Barry and Cameron. Come on, Pastor Barry. I'm going to say something to you, brother. When we cast our cares, brother, we throw down. How many of them get ready to throw down? Throwing all of it on God. The enemy said, this ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. I cast my care upon God. I cast my concern upon God. What happens? It will drive the spirit of worry and anxiety and stress crazy. Why? Because it needs, here goes what stress and anxiety. My God, Shannon, it's good to be on the Mega Man tonight. What stress and anxiety and worry needs is our consent to engage us. It needs our attention to actually defeat us. It needs our cooperation in order to operate. If you were, if you, and when you and I back up and say, God, I'm scared. God, this is bothering me, and I'm going to throw down. I'm going to throw it on you. God, I'm going to cast my care on you. God, I can't work it out. I have met a place in my life, on my job, in my family, in my marriage, that I can't change a thing. I'm not in charge, Jesus. Lord, I need you to help me through, bring me through this. God, you see to be getting the middle and the end. I cast this care on you. It's all yours. There have been times in your life, honey, where you didn't say, Lord, that man is yours. Isn't that right, baby? Yeah. You've been there before. That's why right. my sweetie is sitting right here with me, partner. She's had time where she said, God, deal with it. Deal with it. First Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him for he. Now, how, why are we casting them upon him? The key reason why we are casting all our cares on the Lord, because he cares for us. He cares for us greater than any program that the government can come up with. He cares more about us greater than anybody on your job or trying to backstab. Listen, please, 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 people, understand this. It's not how many people that are against you. It's you realizing the one person who's with you that nobody can change, and that's God himself. Casting your care upon him. This word careth comes from the word that means melo, M-E-L-O, or maybe hacking it up, mellow. And it means to be interested in. It means to let a matter consume you. So what God wants us to do is to cast our cares upon him because he careth. It matters to him. Now I know we might say, ain't, ain't nobody care. Oh, the devil is a lie. Somebody say it with me. If my life matters to God. My job matters to God. My children matters to God more than they matter to me. He loved them first. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12 and 1 bay. it says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. I, listen, I, I, I've often told you all this story. I often told you, hey, Barry, watch this, brother, Pastor Barry, watch this. I share a story with people how that when I was a little boy, I had a toy one time and when I looked at the bottom of the toy, it said on the bottom of it, in case any type of malfunction, return to the manufacturer. And that's what God is saying. 
If things ain't turning out right, return to the manufacturer. If it looks like you're stuck and can't move, stand still and return to the manufacturer. When your hands they come to the most Sunday, they will see When your hands look like they're tied, turn to the manufacturer. The thing that disarms the spirit of stress, worry, and anxiety. Yeah, I said it. Trust in God. That's the bottom line. Well, how you know how it's going to turn out? Hey, he's the one doing it. All I know is I plan to stay true to the end and see what the end's going to be. There's another old hymn we used to sing back in the day, Shannon, and it went like this. I think I'll run on and see what the end's going to be. And I maintain to tell you, that's the way it is. You got to keep running until you see what the end is going to be. You got to keep running until you see the prophetic word of God take place in your life. You got to sometimes stand still until you see the salvation of the Lord. There comes a time, Evelyn, where you got to stand still because the battle is God and it's not yours. Are you hearing me? Look to people. Look to me. Listen to what I'm saying to you. It says here in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 and 32. Here was what Jesus said. Therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. But your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all things. Uh, the key that gets me right here. Ed, right here baby. Here what it says. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all things. Evelyn, there's nothing that we need that God don't know what it is. Sometimes I think we have to trust him even when we want something and he deals with what we need. And there's been some times in our marriage, baby, that there were things we wanted. I mean, listen, Evelyn, you remember when we wanted that first house? I'm going to tell you all about it. Can I tell you, Michelle, I'm going to tell you about the first house. Shannon, I'm going to tell you about the first house. The first house that me and Evelyn wanted. Now, we were fretting about whether we get the money. We were fretting about whether we were going to be able to move. And Shannon, we wanted the house. We wanted what we wanted when we wanted it. Isn't that right, baby? Well, here goes what happened. We signed for the house, Shannon. And the same day we signed for that house, the house that we wanted, and we wanted it then, and we wanted it now. The same day we signed for that house, we get a call. And someone said in Georgetown, Delaware, there is on, on, on US 113 DuPont Boulevard, there is a, a, a church building, a place where you can write, a, where you can get this church land. Honey. Here we are now, they're calling us, telling us only one thing. You need a cosigner. It was homeowner finance, the property was, the place where our church is. That is 25053 DuPont Boulevard. Now, here we go, the same night, we signed for our house, and on the way out, hardly getting home, another person called us, ready for our church land to be bought. The only person had that had good credit, I want y'all to listen at me. Evelyn is sitting right here, ain't you, babe? Mm -hmm. The only person that had good credit in our church then was me and Evelyn. Oh, you heard me. And we had just used our good credit, our good name, y'all, to get the house that we wanted. And here goes life. Now, all of a sudden, the church building come up. Now, we couldn't have them too. Now, we know what we wanted. And we thought right then that God had given us that house. Didn't you, babe? Yes. We said, oh, look at the Lord. We finally found a place. Praise be to God. It's it. How many of y'all ever felt something was it and, wasn't, and it wasn't? Well, let me talk to you. Can we talk? Can we talk? We're still talking about stress and worrying and anxiety. We were stressed out looking for that house, worried about looking for that house, and full of anxiety about looking for that house. And we signed the dotted line. We had 72 hours for that contract to be sealed. It was it. It was sealed. When they called us about that, that land, Evelyn and I, I remember we had a meeting with some of the people from the church. 
No one had any money. No one could sign anything. I said to Evelyn at the end of that meeting, I said, baby, you know what? We can't get the house that we were believing God for and that church at the same time. I don't see how we can do both of them. I said, Evelyn, I want you to go to bed and you talk to God. I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to talk to Jesus. I said, when we get up, we will both tell what we feel the Lord is dealing with us about the church or about the house. Now, here goes something I told her. Saramir, listen to this. I said, F, if you wake up and tell me that God did not say the same thing I'm saying, I will never throw it in your face. That means that the Lord did not have us to come at one about this place. And I will go ahead, we'll get the house, and the church just have to get some other way. Because family came first. Are you hearing me? When Evelyn got up, Shannon, I want you to hear this, man. Still talking about anxiety, worry, and stress. We stressed out over that place. We were, had a whole lot of anxiety over that place, Shannon. We had a whole lot of worry trying to get to that place. And here we go now. House in our hands. And now the church building could have been in our hands. Evelyn woke up that morning. She said, I said, tell me what he's telling you first. She said, honey, the Lord told me that we need to get that church building. I said, Ev, 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 don't sit in. Don't, now, anybody out that marriage, you know what I mean. Da, 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 don't say this. If it ain't a real deal, please don't do this. Because I felt led the same way. She said, this is what I know God is telling me. I said, Evelyn, he told me the same thing. We called the real, the, the real estate agent. We counseled the contract. We had time to do it. It was less than 72 hours. And we called the other place in Baltimore, and we bought the church. And Pilgrim's Ministry of Deliverance, the church in Georgetown, Delaware, 25053 DuPont Boulevard, was bought in 1983, and the ministry is still going. Evelyn, can I tell them? And the uh, one house we lost, today we own three properties. Are you hearing me? Hey, we own three pieces of heavy land 12 miles inland from the Atlantic Ocean. Three pieces. We gave up one house, and God gave us triple for our trouble. So the thing we were worried and stressed about the thing that happened that we thought was God, thought was the real deal, we ended up getting, Shannon, the house that God had for us. I wish somebody would say amen. Brother, that's powerful, ain't it? Had Evelyn not yielded, Shannon, had Evelyn and I not yielded to what God said, we would not have had the powerful home base and ministry that we operate in now. Today, Shannon, I literally live, don't we, baby, in the place of I shall not want. Because all my needs and my desires is about the kingdom. Shannon, I'm going to do this thing, knock it off, and go back with the Father unless the trumpet sounds and, and the dead in Christ rise first. And Shannon, see you when I get there, baby. But at the end of the day, the place we worried about, the thing we stressed about, the thing that we had anxiety about God, in his infinite wisdom did. So sometimes you got to be willing to lay back and let God then hold better than hold on and get in the way. Did I say something then, Evelyn? We need to learn sometimes when you're engaging worry, when you're engaging stress, when you're engaging anxiety, stress, lay back and say, Lord, I am stressed. I am beginning to worry. Matter of fact, God, no, I'm not beginning to worry. I am God. But Lord God, I know that you own a cattle on a thousand hills. Hallelujah, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. I know God, you said the just shall live by their faith. You told me that. Cast to throw down all my cares on you. Why? Because you care for me. I oppose you, spirit of worry. I oppose you, spirit of stress. I oppose you in Jesus' name. And I refuse to let you hold me under your captivity. Is anybody hear me? The Bible said also, glory be to God, for us not to fret. That word fret is sarah, and it means to be blazed up with anger, to be jealous. The Bible said fret not, Proverbs 24, 19. 
Look at this, baby. Proverbs 24, 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall be they, they for there shall be no reward to the evil men, and the candle of the wicked shall be put out. But my thing is, I'm not even worried about somebody getting judged and bad things happen to people. I don't want nothing bad to happen to nobody. I don't want nothing bad ever to happen to nobody. But what I want to glean from this verse here, Proverbs 24, 19, this word threat is Sharah. C-H-A-R-A-H. C-H-A-R-A-H. Sharah. And it means do not allow yourself to be blazed with anger or jealousy or envy or straight up mad because somebody else looked like they're blessed. Well, it looked like to me everybody else is getting things and everybody is getting ahead but me. Sweetheart, leave it alone because God's got a time and a season for all things and God has not forgotten you. The Bible says this in the it, it's for 63 times in the Bible. Pastor Barry 63 times in the Bible, the word says, fear not. Do you hear me, Chairman? It says, fear not. And this word, fear here, is delos. Delos. D-E-I-L-O-S. Delos. And it means to be timid, to be fearful, or to stress out and fret. God told Paul, God have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love power in a sound mind. Whose love? God's love. Whose power? God's power. Whose soundness? God's soundness in your mind. Isaiah 35, 4 say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong and fear not. Behold, I am your God. This is what it says here. Read it with me, baby. Look at this. Isaiah 34, 35, 4 says to them that ye are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with recompense, and he will come and save you. Fret not yourself. Fear not. The Lord said, I am with you. Is anybody hearing me? My whole deal is saying to you, when it comes to worry, anxiety, and stress, Proverbs, uh, Psalms chapter 37, verse 1 through 7 says, Fear not yourself. Trust in the Lord and trust in him. Psalms 38, 18 says, says, he said that I was full of anxiety because of my sin. Then repent. If you, that's some of you, uh, hear me. You are afraid that you sin some sin and God's going to get you. What well, I got news. He's done gave a redemption for your sin. He done gave an atonement for your transgression. Repent of your sin. Get dust yourself off. And glory be to God and go ahead and walk in God. My dear friend, you have to be careful of anxiety, fear, and stress messing your life up. Listen, are you hearing me? Listen, let me tell you what it will do to you. One of the things that fear and worry will do, it will strangle you. It will try to choke out faith. Fear and, fear and stress and anxiety will always keep you on edge. Shannon, I'm at the point, because I know we're down, we're hitting it, we're hitting it and kicking it. I'm at the point of trying to tell everybody here tonight, we want to come against and take authority over spirits of fear. There's some folks that you fear and have anxiety about the end time. You can't live your here and now because you're worrying about then and later. My God, I'm asking God to break that yoke off of you. Then we got others that are fear, worldful, and stressful, and you fear letting your children go outside. I talked to a person a few weeks ago. I said everything that you have been made to fear, everything that has tried to make you feel like dread is coming, you're in trouble, life is getting ready to mess you up, none of it happened. The enemy told you, oh, if you get up and you go outside and drive out town, they're liable to be an accident. And you, and you did it, and nothing happened. Every week, every day, he keeps testing you, taunting you, and God still keeps you. He keeps telling you what's going to happen to you, and God still keeps you. I'm going to say something, Evelyn. During this whole COVID thing, and people were dying, I was not worried about dying because I had already prepared to live forever. So my attitude was, hey, COVID ain't going to kill me. 
God will be the one that takes me. COVID is not in charge of my life. Now, you know what? One of my sisters, my sister Lovey, I miss Lovey. My sister Lovey talked to me before she went to heaven during the COVID season. My sister Lovey, I went by the house. I used to go by and kick back over my sister Lovey's and to talk to her in the mornings. And Lovey said to me, Ivory, brother, I'm ready for the Lord. And I would look at her, I told her, I said, Lovey, I am too. I said, whatever God does, hey, it's going to be in his time and in his season. Well, God took Lovey. Lovey right now is in heaven. I don't know whether girlfriend hears me preach, but I plan to kick it and preach it and see you later when I get there. Matter of fact, I remember telling you, Evelyn, remember when I said I had a word that I needed to tell my family at my sister's funeral. And that word that I said to them was, Lovey, see you when I get there. Yeah, I got Freddie. I'm going to see him when I get there. I got Shelton, my brother-in-law. See him when I get there. I got my Aunt Torah. I see you when I get there. I got the baby that me and Evelyn would have had, but it passed away and in heaven now. See you, Melissa, when I get there. I plan to live this thing by faith. I plan to battle against the host of hell. I plan to trust God with everything within me. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit of worry, anxiety, stress, and fear. I rebuke it on your job. I rebuke it in your family. I rebuke stress and worry. Well, my children, what are they going to do? The same Savior that penetrated your heart and mine is the same one that is able to get to there. The just has to live by their faith. Evelyn, I'm preaching about, amen, some believers, glory be to God, that will contend to the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. The apostle Paul and them stood strong. Listen at this, guys. You know, I've got a little bit of church history in me, and that's one of the things that helps build my faith along with the word. There was a lady in the Bible. Her name was Perpetua. And Perpetua's father was wealthy in Rome. And but Perpetua became a Christian. And they were trying to give her a break. And her father pleaded with her. He said, Perpetua, listen to me, daughter. Said, I can get you off of this and you will not die like the Christians who are dying in the arena. He said, all I want you to do, Perpetua, my daughter, my child, all I want you to do is deny Jesus. Just deny this Christianity. And Perpetua looked at her father. And she pointed over to a vase of vase. She said, Father, over here sets this vase. And it can be anything, nothing different than just that. It is a vase of vase. She said, no more than I can change who I am. I am a believer. I am a believer in Christ. I am a Christian. He said, but my daughter, if you don't denounce him, they're going to take you in. They took Perpetua Evelyn. And history records that they took her out in the arena. And they were turning lions out to kill the Christians. It's said that they tied her to a pole. I'm talking about somebody's faith that was ruthless. Faith that she would not deny the Lord in death. And some of us might ready to throw up our hands because we don't get what we want. A frigidaire. A car, uh, a, 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 the job we wanted. Perpetua was standing in power of her life, Evelyn. And they said the lion, first when it raked its claw against her, it pulled down her strap and exposed her chest. Perpetua had it covered back up and said, excuse me for exposing myself. The lion took her life, but she refused refuse to bow. Now, I know we live in a time, Evelyn, where it's always, we're going to always be rescued and we're going to always get what we want. We're going to have to learn to serve the Lord or else. Serve him with or without. Serve him because of who he is. 
And the Bible says our steps are ordered by the Lord. My steps are not ordered by the astrological signs. My steps are not ordered by tarot cards. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Why should I look to the new moon and the sun when I got the S-O-N, the Redeemer, Yeshua HaMashiach, my Redeemer, my Savior, my Lord. We are going to have to contend for the faith that was delivered unto the saints. When you get to this place of faith, you find yourself, yes, there will be things that you will be concerned about. Yes, there will be things, things that will bother your mind, but you will not allow them to move you. You will not allow them to get you off centered. Fret not yourself because of evil doers. Don't you dare be envious of workers of iniquity. Shannon, I know that I'm getting close to the end, man. I love coming on a mega man. I want to say this to y'all. One of the things about it, don't worry, it's a waste of time. Don't worry because the situation that you're in, God's got it. Do not allow the enemy to cause you to fret. Do not allow the enemy to steal your joy. Don't let that bum make you feel like you've got to give up to him. Become so ruthless in your faith. In the name of Jesus, Shannon, may I pray now, buddy. I say it. Absolutely, gladly do a many mass deliverance, my friend. Gladly. Yes, sir. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as I prepare to close out of this Omega Man radio broadcast, Lord God, first I want to thank you and praise you, Father God, for being our keeper and our redeemer. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, uh, <coughs> there are many out here that are listening to the sound of my voice. First of all, I ask the Holy Spirit to go ahead there and heal the deep wounds that are in them that have built fear anxiety, stress, and unbelief. I ask you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, that you break those strongholds. Lord God, we call out every spirit of worry, anxiety, and fear. Let them go now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke intimidation. I rebuke the fear of men in the face of the men. I rebuke and take authority over fear whether you are able to do an application. Fear whether you will get hard or fear whether you will be far. Come on. I command the fear on the job. I command workplace fear. I break you in the name of Jesus. There are some father that even fears the enemy, fears people, fears men. Come on out of there now. I call you out in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask God by his anointing that you heal those areas and break those jokes. I call out fear in Jesus' name that attacks people in the sleep. Worry, can't go to sleep, can't get a night's rest because you're stressed out and worried. I command that to be broken. Lord God, let the anointing of your spirit right now go in there and break that yoke that causes them to lose their peace lose their rest and lose their sleep. I ask in the most Sunday the most here in the name of Jesus Christ loose them right now from fearing secret wounds and secret things some of you the enemy holds secrets over you and you're stressing out and worrying whether the right person will hear it or whether to get out Lord God loose them right now in Jesus name from the fear of the future or fear of the past I call you out in the name of Jesus Christ I rebuke and take authority against the fear of failure I break you I break that yoke in Jesus name and I call you out that's right come on out of that now, I command those that fear witchcraft, demons, devils, uh, and things coming at you, go. Fear of darkness in the night, go. Fear of driving and riding, go. Come on. Agoraphobia, come out of it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command fear of animals, uh, fear of insects, come on. Fear of, come on, come on, rodents, come on. Go now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I answer right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Even break fear of the marriage or the home or the family being destroyed. Go. I command fear of death. Come on out of there. Come on out of there now. Fear of death. Go. 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 Go now. I break you fear of death. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to loose now. In Jesus' name, and let them go. I command fear of poverty, destruction, lack, and want. I command you to go now. Fear of losing everything. I command you to go now. Also fear 
that God may not answer your prayer. I command somebody that's sitting on the edge. You've been waiting quite a while to get a breakthrough in something and it seemed like it has not come yet. I ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ to loose you now from that fear spirit of fear of things not happening, things not coming out right. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, even I ask those that fear losing loved ones. That's why you're afraid that they're going to die. You're afraid that you can't live without them if they're gone. Father God, everybody has a time and a season to die. One day the Lord will take me. One day he'll take my mama. One day he will take Evelyn. But Lord God, build me with a confidence in you that they will be absent from the body present with the Lord and I will see them when I get there. I command that spirit right now of grief and mourning. Come out right now. I command that spirit right now in Jesus' name of destruction of the family. Fear of something happening to your child. Go. I command fear of your child being in the street and being shot or killed by a police officer or an officer being killed by a criminal. I command that to go. I pray on both sides because the enemy is rang up uh, but we put him down in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the name of Jesus Christ, fear of somebody hurting you, harming you, attacking you, raping you, molesting you. Go in Jesus' name. I call it right now anxiety, stress, worry, and fear about your children going through the same thing you went through when you were a child. Come out. I command in the name of Jesus, spirit of fear of separation, fear of divorce. Go. I command the spirit of fear, worry, and anxiety that you'll never get married. Come on out of that. Come on out of there now. Whosoever finds you, finds a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. Uh, I break those spirits that say, you'll be lonely all your life. Ain't nobody wants you. Ain't nobody loves you. I command you to go. Fear of rejection. Fear of self-rejection. Come out in the name of Jesus. I run the bruce I command it in Jesus' name. And Father, we give you honor and we give you praise that you are our deliverer. Father God, as I hold my wife's hand, we pray for our generations. Uh, we pray for children and children's children. Father God, every demonic soul that wants to keep the fear of them not knowing the Lord. Fear of them out there living some kind of life and saying the enemy taking our life. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Lord God, we ask you right now to pull down right now for every leader. Fear of operating in the gifts and the calling God has called you with. Go! I command fear of being in ministry. Fear of being used by God. Go! Fear of bringing out your book. Fear of bringing out your idea. Fear of bringing out your creativity. Go! I break that fear, anxiety, and worry and I command it to loose down. In Jesus' name. And Lord God, I thank you that we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. Lord God, you told us to pray not because of evil doers, neither be envious of working with iniquity. Lord God, I pray for Philippians 4, 6, and 8. God, in Jesus' name. I will be careful for nothing. In Jesus' name, I will bring everything to you in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, I will make my request known unto you. Father God, let the peace of God that passes all understanding. Let it, let it keep my heart and keep my mind through Christ Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I loose over me and over this people. The Spirit of God to bring truth. The Spirit of God to bring honesty. The Spirit of God to bring justice. The Spirit of God to bring purity. The Spirit of God to bring things that are lovely, holy, and right. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray and praise and thank you right now for breakthroughs I cannot see. A way out that I did not know. I thank you for the angels of the Lord that encamp about me because we are heirs of salvation. And Lord God... We thank you, Lord God, for breaking up these silly, stupid demons that harass people at night when they're sleeping. Go! I command the worry over them, the stress over them. Go! I break your power in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Woo! Shannon, thank you. Man of God, it's good to be on Bali, Indonesia with you, my man. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm fired up. Glory be to God. My, my girl Amber sat right here beside me, and it made me preach a little bit more, Shannon. We are fired up today, brother. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, let me say this to you. Thank you, Shannon, for wanting me to announce uh, about our website. Amen. And we have a uh, our website is pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. Amen. If anyone out there could just throw that up. Evelyn's up here with me. She can't do it. That's pilgrims 
pilgrimsministry.org. Amen. And also on pilgrimsministry.org, there's a section, Shannon, we got called Deliverance and Counseling Sessions. In that, glory be to God, you sign up. There is a fee for my time. Praise God for that. But it is a 45-minute detail session where we teach, minister, give insight, and we cast out devils. I, don't, nobody, please don't you call me ever again asking me, do I cast out devils? Shannon, we've been busting devils for close to 45 years. This isn't my first rodeo, and we've been getting it done every day. So when you go on the website, I'm going to slow it down. Evelyn wants me to slow down. Okay, babe. You go on our website at pilgrimsministry.org. When you go on that website, you will find also where we have material. I wrote 22 books, and I have about five more that's already inside of me getting ready to come out. Amen. That's pilgrimsministry.org. You can go and you can get different books that we've written on deliverance and other subjects. Also, in the counseling session, we not only, we, Shannon, we counsel, we do deliverance and counseling. That means we don't, you can't talk a demon out of people. You can't counsel a demon out. What you do with counseling is get down to the root cause so that the demon can be kept out. But we do straight up, straight up deliverance. Been doing it for 45 years. Also, Shannon, we do marriage counseling. There's a section there that we do marriage counseling. We do, uh, and we also, glory be to God, we counsel areas of ministry, things about giftings, things about the grace. And, and also, Shannon, in that counseling part, we actually get calls coming from all over the world, people that are going through different, ses different things in their lives, on the job, in the workplace. I'm doing some marvelous work, Shannon, with my videos when it's called, called Warfare in the Workplace. We've been kicking there, my man. Shannon, we're just doing a lot in the Lord. I am so excited about what me and Evelyn is doing. I've never been in a place like this since you met me, Shannon. I'm sure you can tell that even my preaching and my presentation has changed because I'm in the will of God. I'm in the of soul, my name of us. See, glory. I'm in the will of God with my life. And all I want to do is teach and preach balanced deliverance and then go home. That's it. So you go on our website. There is counseling. There is materials and books. Shannon, we even have MP3 downloads that you can get of messages. You can download them on any of your devices. And, and brothers, I'll just tell you, it's been a blessing. You know I'll be coming right back with you next month, Shannon. I look forward to being on Omega Man. I'm getting ready to back up the way and turn it in your hands, man. But that's pilgrimsministry.org.